Hi guys, good evening. Good evening. So guys, let's wait for another two minutes. Uh, let's wait for other another people also so that they'll jo all join for the class. Yeah, I have enough. So I think good to go. We can start with the session. Hi, good evening, everyone. Right. Uh, my name is Pranav and uh, we'll be starting our class another minute. Let's wait to see if anyone else is joining. Is uh, Will anyone else be joining? Or? Uh, I think all joined. Uh, uh, two or three people are supposed to join. But yeah, we can start because we committed uh, that to start at uh, 8.30. So we can start now. Yeah. Seems like people are still joining. Okay. Um, Anyways, so meanwhile, everyone joins. Uh, I just want to understand if any one of you has already worked on Fortigate in their uh, professional space, or if they are currently working, or if they are they'll be having a project in near future. Uh, currently, I'm having a project with Fortigate. Okay, great. So, is it in the deployment phase, or you're just there for the support? Uh, we are just migrating actually from 60E device to 100E. Okay, so in 60E also, I believe you would be working, right? Sorry? At 60E also, you were working or it's just you got it? Uh, no, I just got it because uh, before I was uh, uh, um, handling project in checkpoint. Now we are getting in 40K. Okay, so you have a checkpoint background. Great. Uh, right. Anyone else? Prasanna, Rahul, Niyas, Ashtosh, anyone? Okay, no problem. Guys, let's uh, make this session an interactive session so that uh, you can ask me questions and you don't get bored while we are at it. So that will be my ask to you. And if there is some ask from your side, you can give me as well. Anyways, we'll uh, just start the session now. All right, so let's start. All right, I hope you guys can uh, see the screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can. So uh, this is the very first session today. And uh, this is uh, the basic we'll be discussing today. Nothing uh, much. It is, I'll be telling you what we'll be doing around in the coming days and uh, what FortiGate is, why there is such, such a dust in the air related to FortiGate when it comes to a security device, SD-WAN solutions, all those things we'll be discussing. So there are two aspects of it. One is NAC4, uh, that is basically the understanding of what FortiGate is, uh, what is this device going to do in your network, 
what is it capable of doing and a few topics what you will be doing uh, covering in under, under this nsc4 course and the, these will be a few of the topics that you'll be covering under nsc4 okay this is this would be our agenda for this what is the prerequisite simply you should be knowing the network protocols and basic understanding of what firewall is how it works in order to learn next gen firewall obviously we would expect you to understand the basic firewall uh, coming to the objectives of this nsc4 would be uh, that you should be able to deploy the basic 40 gate device like one of your fellow is uh, uh, doing uh, the migration so there will be a lot of deployment required from from his side so he'll be able to deploy those things get it up get it working and maintain it that is the basic course of uh, basic objective of nse4 then post that we'll also be covering uh, within this only uh, this complete course will be covering the nsc7 40 gate security part as well uh, what we'll be covering here in 40 gate security if you see the agenda is pretty similar to what was there in your uh, NSC4. What is uh, the difference? Sorry to disturb I think we are not able to see your screen, uh, the page which you're following. One minute. Let me share the complete screen. Okay. Are you able to see the screen now? Yeah, now it's visible. So, this is what I was discussing earlier. This is the NSC4 security part. That is the agenda or NSC4. Okay. Apart from that, these are the objectives. Like I said, we'll be focusing on how to deploy it, how to get the things up, how to maintain it. And then comes the NSC 7 security, 40 gate security part. You see that the contents of NSC 4 and 7 are pretty much same. But then what's the difference? The difference is NSC 4 will be helping you in troubleshooting and working on 40 gate as a network administrator over 40 gate however the nsc7 will get you to the next level and get you that expertise sme tag when it comes to 40 gate you will be able to troubleshoot the issues and when i say troubleshoot not i don't mean basic troubleshooting i mean the troubleshooting which involves understanding and analyzing the logs getting the flow filters understanding how things work what is the packet flow? All those things you'll be able to understand and troubleshoot the issues on your own. Okay. So this is what we'll be covering among this. Again, the prerequisite for this part is definitely the NSC4. You should know how to deploy the device, what is there in the device, how you will bring up all those things, all those things you need to know. Okay. And uh, this is the objectives that you'll be working on later. You'll be able to do the uh, IPsec, high CPU problems, HA related problems, uh, you know, authentication. You'll understand authentication in, uh, in a bit of detail. Apart from that, you'll also understand how your UTMs work. Number one, why you need UTM. So any one of my friend here, if they want to tell me uh, what is UTM and uh, what is the purpose of UTM? Please tell me. Anyone? Let me see the participant list. UTM, you say? Uh, yes. Is it threat management? Mm -hmm. uh, so any threat or uh, uh, like attacks? Or that it checks through the traffic and then it try to uh, avoid that. Okay. Anyone else? If anyone else wants to add a point to that? Come on, guys, speak up. It's no like it's a, um, it's like a tracking module which is uh, used in the world website something okay see utm is unified threat management so when in my uh regular environment office setup 
uh, I will be having uh, one web filtering device. One, I'll be having one IPS device. I may be having an antivirus in the endpoints as well. Okay, so I am having three different devices, three different modules. I may also be having, uh, you know, DDoS protection. <coughs> UTM is Unified Threat Management. It is going to compile all these things under one category. And you don't need seven, four, six, four, five, ten, whatever number of more devices. Just one, this firewall is enough and it will manage all those aspects as well. So that aspect we'll be covering in NSC4 and we'll go in detail in NSC7. So what matters here is by the end of this course, what my uh, expectation from you guys would be that you guys should be able to handle a FortiGate device uh, completely and you should know when a packet enters the FortiGate, what all processes it will pass through. Okay, before the packet goes the egress interface. So coming to in ingress and what happens between the way and then goes out to egress. So all of that would be covered in this. Any questions so far? Like what is mean by NSC4, NSC7? It's a model or what? See, uh, for example, uh, if you have work, let's say, let's talk about our generic networking exams. We know that CCNA, CCN, PCCI, right? So this is just the level of information where NSC4 is a level certain modules developed by the Fortinet guys to understand their product. So if you're an NSC4 guy, uh, it would be expected that you will be able to deploy the stuff and do the basic troubleshooting and understand uh, how you deploy it, how a packet would enter, probably take a capture, and what are the different type of captures, different levels of like 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 in this NSV four and seven, all the uh, device or it will be same or the features will be different. Sorry, like as you said, like NSV four and NSV seven, mm -hmm. like uh, the models, uh, all the things will be same or it will be uh, features will be different. No, 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 no. So NSC4 and NSC7 will be done on the same 40 gig. The features okay, see, will be... Actually, in, in my office, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, in my office, we are using NSA2700. Uh, sorry, what are you using? Uh, two, uh, NSA2700. That's the model. Seven double zero. Are you sure that you're talking about a forty gate firewall? Forty gate It's a forty gate model. Okay. See, when we talk about forty gate model, there is a complete range of forty gate hardwares that is available in the market, starting from a thirty e that can cater around five to seven to ten people to six thousand, seven thousand chassis that can cater around 10,000 users. There is all between, in between 30E, 60E, 40E, okay. uh, 100F, 1200, 1500, 2000 series device, 2500 yeah. series device, 3K devices. The troubleshooting on all of them remains same. Okay. okay. The approach of troubleshooting on all of them remains same. It's just that you are getting a more premium device. Right. So, for example, I bought a 30E device of, let's say, around 50,000 rupees. You bought a 2500 series device of, let's say, around 50 lakh rupees. So, what different will be there in our hardwares? Your device will have more number of ports. My device won't. Okay. Your yeah, device yeah. may be having those NP6 processors. My device won't. The basics oh, okay. would be same, but what the Fortinet is offering would be different. But it's not that, like... Uh, my device will not be doing IPS inspection or not building an IPSec tunnel, but your device can. Those are the basic things that they have made available on all hardwares or VMs. Okay, okay, okay. Like all the firewall, uh, the features will be remain same or each device, uh, it will be different. Like PAL ward or um, uh, uh, Sonic wall. No. So what we are discussing here is just the 40 gate part, right? So yeah, the yeah. features, no, what, my, what my, Sonic, yeah, sorry, complete, please complete. Yeah. 
yeah yeah actually my question is like uh, if we learn uh, fortigate uh, mm -hmm. like all the devices will be uh, remain same concept uh, like we can uh, once we learn this we, we can able to uh, manage those devices as well see in my opinion i would say somewhat yes but when we talk about the manage i cannot confirm if after learning fortigate you will be able to troubleshoot sonic wall because every device has a different architecture but yes if you learn the leading firewall product in the market number one your value will go up number two you know that okay some feature may be available in fortigate but if you are trying to find the same feature in sonic wall maybe you don't get that feature over there this course is just defined for the fortigate not for the other firewall yeah. but no, no, you no, no, understand no, no. how the next gen firewall works what is the next yeah, gen yeah. firewall capable of doing so i'll give you one That's small true. example when i learned uh, the fortigate device so uh, we, we we can uh, troubleshoot basic things right if whatever the stuck uh, like uh, what is the different deployment also we can do the basic uh, troubleshooting right after getting this course yeah you can but see like i said i just want to give you a clear expectation mm -hmm. the troubleshooting in my opinion changes when the cli changes so for example if i know cisco asa mm -hmm. it does not mean i know how to troubleshoot on fortigate or if i know how i troubleshoot on fortigate same way i will not troubleshoot on cisco asa so that for in order to learn cisco asa i better do ccna security part now they have clubbed everything but yes. i better do that course this yes. course will make you an expert with respect to fortigate yes today if you ask me that ripu can uh, or or uh, or can you uh, make uh, make ipsec tunnel going on the sonic wall mm -hmm. i can i know where the tab will be what is required in ipsec tunnel but the way i can troubleshoot on fortigate i cannot troubleshoot on sonic wall it's a different product it's yeah different like for example uh, the the ipsec is implemented through aws to the fortigate recently we did uh, some project with some customer so mm -hmm. regarding this one we can uh, for anything after finishing this course we can get some troubleshoot if anything issues we can get some idea yes when we talk about idea you will certainly get an idea but um, in my experience so far just getting an idea does not usually gets the issue fixed It's proper deep, deep troubleshooting sometimes that is required mm -hmm. but yes you would know that okay when when i am building an ipsec tunnel in fortigate what are the things i required i require a remote gateway i require local selectors i require no nat should be enabled so when i will take a look in the sonic wall i will see that okay do i have a remote gateway configured okay do i have a, a traffic selector enabled okay am i enabling uh, have i disabled nat natting or enabled natting i can check these things where to check how to check through cli and what if everything is same still the tunnel is not coming up how to take debugs at sonic wall that will be completely different but yes just uh -huh. the looks what i need to check that these four five six points are same or there or not because if it is there on fortigate it will be similar on the sonic wall the tabs will be similar the gui will be similar not same but similar you will have to toggle around and you will find those tabs okay so what are the requirement things we can get it so it is there or not the basics very very basics you can yes. you can get a basic idea of it but uh -huh. if you want to learn how to troubleshoot at sonic wall i would recommend that you learn how to troubleshoot at sonic wall fortigate course will not help you learn how to troubleshoot at sonic wall it will just help you learn how to do and troubleshoot at no, sonic not sonic wall for like for yeah, yeah any anything sonic wall, i'm just as an example you bring in polo alto as well mm -hmm, because yeah. see things change at fortigate i will tell the ipsec as a, a traffic selector but if you go and check on polo alto you will not see anything written with traffic selector you will be seeing there as proxy ids but if from you go and searching we can traffic selector from the fortigate but yeah. from our side we can check right fortigate side yes yes from your side you can check for sure hmm. okay yeah any more question guys
So now that uh, none of you are asking me questions, uh, probably I'll be asking you a question at any given point. And then Gaurav can tell us if in case you're not able to answer those questions, what, what to be done. Uh, excuse me. Uh, can you just give me two minutes? I will be back. Still not started, right? Yeah, we'll start. I'll wait for you. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I actually didn't hear the first class or... Um, this is the very I, first not... class. Okay, fine. Thank you. Actually, last time I received the mail, but I seen after the times goes up, so I missed the last class, like introduction or something like that. It was there. So there we basically class. just discussed what Fortigate is and what is bringing what it, what it is bringing to the market. Just those things. Uh -huh. Today we are discussing a bit more detail and introduction with Fortigate. What is it? Um, how it works, what are the few basic things in FortiGate? Then you can, if you guys have lab access already. Uh, we didn't, uh, it was in that uh, things, but I didn't log in it. No problem. I understand all of us are busy doing things. Whenever you yeah. get time, you- Still, still I'm in the office. <laughs> yeah. Hats off to your dedication, but yeah, that, that's how we all learn, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Let's wait for one more minute and then we can start. Also, guys, if if meanwhile while we are waiting, you can tell me what is your expectation from this course. Tell me. Like uh, we need to uh, like we have a different kind of like in my office uh, in head office they are using um, Fortigate in branch office they are using um, Sonic Firewall uh, like it's a very small device mm -hmm. so like they say I, I, and as of now I'm in the branch so I I don't know whether uh, we can able to manage uh, like different kind of uh, brand as well. Like, okay, better, we are going to sit in the head office, so we need to know about this. So I started learning about Fortigate. Even I joined uh, CCNA, CCNP with Atul sir. It's already going on in the weekend. Uh, with this, <laughs> I joined with you now. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, so, like, we are expecting, like you mentioned, the intro basic introduction plus uh, the troubleshooting part, like day to day life, how we can use it, uh, plus advanced uh, uh, features of the Fortigate. And, like, uh, uh, like model wise labs will be great if you like uh, in, uh, teach something and then we'll have a lab on it. It will be helpful to understand that, like, if you do it ourselves, it will be uh, like more, more hands-on we'll get. It. Sure, sure. We will do the hand-on uh, as well. Don't worry. We will we'll be doing the traffic flows, sniffers, those things you won't, if I come and tell you, this is how you take it, this is the command, you won't learn it. We yes. will do the, those things in the lab. Don't worry. We'll see the UTMs. We'll see the IPsec. We'll, we'll see all of that. Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. back. Thanks, thanks. Even though we can start with the uh, basic installation process as well. Yeah, uh, that is what we'll be covering uh, today. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, can you share me, um, like, what are the topics you are going to cover day by day? I, I, we will get to know uh, before the day, uh, at least we can go through it. Like, what is UTM? What's the purpose of it? Is At least we will, uh, like, we will get to know. Uh, we will check in the Google uh, what it is. Like, as of now, just now, I get to know. Like, I'm just looking in the Google what it is, what's the purpose of UTM. And sure, see, and uh, what I will say is, uh, at the end of every class, we'll discuss, uh, or I'll tell you at least that what we'll be uh, discussing the next day in the next class. Uh, but there will be a lot of things that will come midway 
and we'll be discussing those as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. At least is not uh, something can... that we I, I had planned to discuss, but just that we uh-huh. went in that in that direction. So I thought, why not? So just like yeah, that. yeah. Like, is there any uh, like uh, syllabus is there to cover? Like yeah. in the day, we will cover this. Like I know I can I understand. Like we if we start from the introductions, I, I don't know if everyone is okay with the introduction day one. It's fine. We will go with the other other topics. If someone somebody is stuck in the day one, we we will it will keep on going on second day as well. So is there any syllabus is there? Like this is how it is. We will go so for it. So basically, uh, since it's a online deri- uh, derived course, right? So I don't think yes. that. Uh, if anyone unfortunately is stuck on something, uh, we'll be stopping the course there for that particular candidate. It will keep okay. going because we have to pay okay. everyone. So okay. they'll have to bit work a bit harder on that and create the lab. And if they have any query, they can reach out. I can answer okay. your queries, and if that helps you, like if at the end of the day, the recording, time, right? That's right. You will provide the recording videos as well. Uh, I'm not sure uh, that. Yes, yes, guys. Answer. Guys are getting a recorded video. The people who enrolled for the program, they'll get a videos in their portal. Ah, uh, okay. yeah. This and however, if you need a I, curriculum, I'm I'll share the browser. You follow this. that browser. But we don't have a device itinerary or something where we suppose. Yeah, to yeah. Do. We, we, because we, we don't want to do it. Like a, that we have a deadline that today we have to finish this topic. If in case that particular topic is going to take a times to understand, of course we are going to spend a lot more time on that. But yes, yeah, the yeah, yeah, I can be, you are completed in a good manner. I can say, uh, like uh, already, uh, actually, I'm seeing uh, already recorded session in, in the portal. So apart from that, for the current recording session, you can give. Yes, it. so the I'll tell you guys le, the previous batch video why we guys are giving just to study. Let's suppose if in case you you want to do a yourself study, at least you have some content with you so that you can study. But yes, you you have a one previous batch video and the recent that's supposed today is the class or so tomorrow it will be uploaded uh, in a new sessions also. And, okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah, so I think good to go. We can start now. Yeah. All right. So uh, today we will be discussing more about uh, the fourteen it the forty gate device, what it does. So just hang on with me. I'll explain you things. And uh, yeah, where you, wherever you feel the problem, let me know. Uh, how many of you are aware of uh, what a Linux is? And what is the architecture of Linux? How that it works? How many of you are aware of Linux? No idea. <laughs> okay. So we are, we are in the platform of Windows. And somehow we have a knowledge in Mac. As well. I don't have a knowledge in uh, Linux. Okay. Okay. So it's not uh, very, uh, you know, high level Linux or something. Why am I asking you this question? Just to tell you, uh, mostly your firewalls are on the Linux kernel only. So is the case with the FortiGate. FortiGate is also a Linux driven uh, OS. Okay. One minute. Without my meeting controls. Yeah. So, like you mean, so we give the path in the Linux to see the file, something you mean it? Yes, sometimes. Yes, because again, the output, you won't understand what the output is. And I believe even the TAC engineers won't understand that because some that is something a developer thing. So, but at least you'll have the output to understand if let's say your CPU is spiking up. Is there, is that due to any interrupt in the process? Which process? All those things, you'll be running the Linux commands, getting out those interrupts, and you'll be sharing that. Just in case if in your organization, you'll be sharing that problem with the TAC, and it will be easier for them also to just directly involve the development if required. Okay. So here we'll just be understanding what Fortigate is, and what are what are these SPUs? Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry to disturb you. Your screen is black. Okay. I can't able to see you. Yeah. Visible now? Yeah. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So what are these basically the SPUs? These are something there which is there in the chip. You'll understand once I proceed. Okay. Okay. 
So the first, let's understand what is this network security and what is a firewall. So the modern context of network security comes from the firewall itself. So firewalls are the gatekeepers on network perimeter. So anyone, if someone asks you, what is the difference between a router and a firewall? Why do I need a firewall when I have a router to pass on the traffic? Firewall means inspect the traffic inbound to outbound. No, that's not or, the basic uh, uh, work of firewall. I'll tell you. Okay. Understand that there is a gate. By default, router's behavior is the gate is open for all. And if you tell me that close the gate for so-and-so, I will close the gate. This is router. Firewall is gate is closed for everyone. So whosoever you tell me to open the gate for, I'll open the gate for that guy. For rest, everyone else, it is closed. So the concept of security becomes easier when we are talking about firewalls. Hence, we require firewalls when it comes to security because by default, their nature is to stop everyone. Now, today's firewalls are designed in response to the multifactored and multi-device environments. Okay, so we need IOTs, we have mobile clouds, we have bring your own devices. So what we do, we block everything and then we allow one by one, whatever we want to give access to. So firewalls are also expected to perform different functions. It could be next generation firewall, segment firewalls, data center firewalls. So these are different types of firewalls where sometimes firewall is sitting uh, at the edge as the internet firewall, where sometimes it is just sitting inside just for the inspection purposes. So there are different rules why and different roles of why firewalls are engaged. So when I said UTM, why I said that? Because if I want to have a 40, uh, if I want to have uh, uh, something to check my URL filtering, something to check antivirus, something to check IPS, I will need multiple devices. But when we are talking about next gen firewalls, especially when we talk about FortiGate, we have all of that under one category. So I need not comply with all three, four, five devices. All I can have is one forty gate and it will cover each and everything. So there are some processing units. This is the chip over which the kernel of 40 OS, this runs over which these things come in. Over which these are basically your 40 guard subscription services. What are they? We'll find that out. Now in the architecture diagram shown in the that slide, the device at duplication. So basically, one of you can ask me, why do we need, uh, you know, 40 gate? Why can't I just have three or four multiple devices? One simple question. For example, your URL hit count is huge. What if there is no or, or your someone is attacking you or the IPS requirement is huge in your environment? What if this goes with high memory? because your uh, IPS requirement was huge. Can it borrow this IPS? Can it borrow uh, some memory space from your URL filter? Uh, you are filtering a URL filtering device? No. But when we have combined all of them together, what we can do is we can borrow the space as well. The, it takes lesser time. There is no need to pass the traffic from three different nodes. It will be passed from one node. The processing will improve. Nowadays, everything needs to be inspected and everything needs to be encrypted. So if it is going to pass from multiple nodes, you will not get good performance. That is where the concept of FortiGate comes in and it will help you understand the things. There are CP chips, which are content processors. There are NP chips, which are network processors. What are they? We'll understand that, uh, that what they do. Okay, now coming to the SPUs. What are SPUs? SPUs are basically the security processing units. Okay, they are there in the firewall. They What they do is they do the hardware acceleration by offloading the resource intensive processing from CPU. So uh, it's, it's not a CPU, but it's an additional module which is present inside the FortiGate to offload the traffic from FortiGate. So whenever we are talking about uh, 3000 series devices, 2500 series devices, like one of you told me that it's there in your environment. 
Why is it better compared to a 100D or 200D device? Because number one, it can take a lot of load, more capacity. Number two, it will give you better performance. But who defines those that better performance? These SPUs will define that better performance. Okay, now coming to the other part, these are security processors, content processors, and network processors. A uh, few types of network processing units are NP7 and NP6. Okay. So all Fortinet hardware acceleration have been renamed to SPUs. Like I said, SPUs are basically your hardware accelerations. Okay, this would include the network processor and content processor. Content processor will be someone which will be doing the inspection. It will be doing the offloading and acceleration of the inspection part. NPX is something that will be doing the offloading of the network traffic. So I, I understand maybe some of you are not getting what I am trying to tell you. Like so, means, so it is uh, available in all the devices or it's in particular high-end devices or something? Mid-range to high-end devices. When we talk about 30, I don't think it would be there in that, but coming to 60F or 80F or 100, it would be there. Hmm. Like from the basic model, only the network uh, component will be there or uh, the port, the processor will be there? The basic uh, firewall will have the basic things. 30 will have basic things. You can't expect to have a 30 yeah. and then put a load of 30 odd users on that. That device will shoot up with the CPU and memory problems. Okay. Okay. So like, for okay. example, you understand if you make your laptop as a server and put it to the world, obviously your laptop will have a high CPU. So it, it is designed to work for only few users or one user at a time. Just like that, that's the design of that putting it. Okay, now FortiGate models have specialized acceleration hardware, okay, that can offload resource instant, uh, intensive processing from main processor to these NP and CP processors. This will eventually put less load on your CPU and your CPU will not go, it will not spike, so will your memory. It, these things won't spike. That is the role of these guys, the NP6 and CP, the NP and the CP processors, okay. Now, uh, if you take a look at this uh, diagram, it's not that you have to memorize it, but just to understand. So this is basically, that is something you will see on the internal chip. Obviously you can break your FortiGate and check that. It will be a problem for you, but this is what it looks like. It will be, uh, the content processor will be there. A network processor would be there. The external IO would be there. That, that's how the chip is designed. If uh, all of you are coming from, uh, electronics and communication background, you would be designing chips and in the VLSI subject. And probably there you would have seen all these things. Okay, content processors, what do they do? They put high speed content inspection. They are not bound to interface. They are closer to application. Why? Because they are there for content inspection, not for the interface. I mean, network related problems. But when we talk about network processor, they do packet processing and they are directly attached to the network interface. Okay, so are these security processors. They increase the performance by accelerating the IPS. Okay, now uh, Fortinet content processor works outside of the direct flow of traffic providing high speed cryptography. That's again, content processing. The encryption application part that is done by your content processor. So all this that I'm telling you is just to tell you that what this content processor will do, what this network processor will do. That's it. Okay. So now setup and uh, decisions, uh, setup uh, decisions, identify the factory default settings. So let's assume now today you got one firewall, one forty gate, and you are uh, checking what are the basic settings in this device. So we'll be checking that. And then there is something known as operation mode. In the very first class, I said that uh, the FortiGate is one of the devices that can work from layer two to layer seven. That's the you know speciality about this device. So this FortiGate firewall can also behave in, in, it can work in the layer two, like a switch. Not exactly that you make it a switch, but it can work like that, as well as it can work like a router or it can work like a firewall and firewall with next gen features. So what are, what happens in those operation mode? We'll discuss that. And then we'll understand basic understanding of what is 40 guard. 
So among you people, how many of you know what is FortiGuard? And what do you think what FortiGuard would be doing in the FortiGate? What what would be the purpose of this FortiGuard? It's like a connector which is give the updates to FortiGate. It's like a connector. Okay. Anyone else? Get these updates from the cloud and gives to FortiGate something like that. Mm -hmm. Anyone, if they want to add something? So FortiGuard are basically centrally managed services that you get on FortiGuard. <clears throat> okay. And uh, like uh, you said that it will, okay, I have something in chat, cloud management, uh, not exactly cloud management, basically. Uh, it will, like they said, they will give you uh, upgrades. So if you want to upgrade tomorrow, uh, how will you upgrade it? I mean, what path would you be following? Let's say you're on 641 and you want to upgrade to 7.2 dot something. What upgrade path you need to follow? What are the images that would be coming? All of it comes from the 40 card. Then secondly, let's say, um, let's say you are, uh, you have created a web filter and you don't want your end user to use any unrated URL or any unrated application, any unknown application. How will we know that the category is falling in that unrated or not? Or eventually that uh, you're using a new URL. Okay, that how will the FortiGate know that this new URL, which I don't know, is it belonging to a spam category? Is it belonging to a, a social media category? Is it belonging to a job role category? So all these things will be checked from the FortiGate. That is why that communication between FortiGate and the FortiGuard is so important. Okay, now uh, modes of operation. So modes of operation will have NAT and transparent mode. Two types of modes are there. One is the NAT mode, one is the transparent mode. FortiGate is an OSI layer three router and FortiGate is an OSI layer two switch or bridge, like I said. It can behave like a layer two as well. It can behave as in, in layer three as well. So these are basically two basic modes that are available in FortiGate. That is transparent and NAT mode. Okay. And then when you are putting your device in NAT mode, you will have to give IP addresses to the interface. Why? Because you are working on layer three. But see, when you are working on transparent, the interfaces do not have IP addresses. Okay. Again, does your switch route the packet at layer two? No. So FortiGate will also not route the packets. It will only forward or block the traffic. Okay. Whereas in your uh, NAT mode, you can route the traffic as well as NAT the traffic as well, just like a router. And again, there is something which is known as VDOM. What is VDOM? VDOM is basically, if you guys worked on firewalls, you'll understand the firewall can work in multiple instances. So VDOM is just like that instance. It can be uh, configured on FortiGate and by default one FortiGate can support around 10 VDOMs. It may support more depending on the model and the uh, licensing for it. But otherwise by default, it will support around 10 VDOMs, 10 different instances. So, so for, for example, example you are, uh, uh, if it, there is four VDOMs means like uh, the configuration, how it is like the policy. In single uh, 40 gate, it will be like four 40 gates. So for example, I am an Airtel ISP and I have employed the 40 gate in my, for giving services to my end customer. So now, the configurations are separate for uh, per Correct. Item? correct. It, it will behave like four 40 gates. I am okay. through a software, I am dividing that one 40 gate into four 40 gates. The configuration of those four, four 40 gates will not club with each other. Few things will be common. That will be if a 40 gate is running on a particular version, that version will be there for all the VDOMs. Mm -hmm. If 40 gate is using a DNS server, that DNS server will be there for all the VDOMs. If 40 gate is having uh, a certain time NTP, that will be there for all the VDOMs. 
So few things are there, but let's say I want to have web filter to job block in one VDOM and web filter to adult content block in another VDOM. So the adult content block will not block the job. The job block VDOM will not block the adult content. So like that. Okay. So actually there is a scenario like we upgraded for a 48 cluster. Like uh, the, there were, there was uh, four VDOMs. When we do the, like first we have to do like a standby upgrade, then we do the primary one like that only, right? But in the VDOM configuration, when we tried to do the upgrade from the standby device, the both devices are upgraded uh, at the same time. So how it's uh, how it's working on that? See, if it depends what you have configured in the VDOM, I'll have to take a look into the configuration part. Mm -hmm. And probably you can reach out to the TAC for that. And they can answer those questions. But again, what needs to be checked here is in your HA, what is your configuration? Mm -hmm. If your VDOM is running in configuration or not. So logically, whenever you are running an active passive, if I push an upgrade to a 40 gig device, first the passive device will get upgraded, then it will be coming to the active device. So what will happen if I push an upgrade, the passive device will first uh, get upgraded, will get rebooted, get upgraded, become active, the active one will become passive, then the same process will happen on that. Then if the, a, a based on your HA priority and override enabled options, one of them devices will come up and remain active. If HA override is disabled, then it will be working on the cluster uptime, uh, the, the device uptime. Uh -huh. So that depends. Now coming back to this, what about the network architecture? Where does FortiGate fit in? So when you deploy FortiGate, you can choose among these two. You want router, you want NAT based on that. That is what it would be doing. Okay, interfaces would be having an exception where when you are putting it in layer two, it will not have an IP. When you're not putting it in layer two, it will have an IP. Now your factory default settings. Okay, your factory default settings will be usually whenever your firewall is coming to you as a new device, the default IP of the firewall will be 192.168.1.99. So usually whenever you guys employ a uh, uh, Airtel or or a or a Geo Wi-Fi in your home, and if you ever directly connect a LAN cable to it, you may find uh, it's or it's probably written at the back the default IP of it. Similarly, on FortiGet also, you'll find a default IP in order to manage the device for the very first time. Okay, then you can enable ping, HTTPS, SSH, all these services on the interface. Only after this, the device will consider your ping response or your HTTPS request or your SSH request. Apart from that, your firewall is also having a built-in DHCP server as well as DNS server, which is there in other firewalls as well. But this is just an introduction. So just telling you what all is there. Again, now coming to the 40 card subscription services, internet connection and contact required. So basically whenever I want to access the 40 guard and want to get upgradation, I need not have a route for this 40 guard. I don't know where this is. All I need is internet connectivity and number two, DNS resolution. So there will be, for example, this update.40guard.net. Internet is there, but DNS is not there on the 40 gate. I'm not able to resolve update.40guard.net. I don't know how to reach to the 40 guard and I won't be able to reach it. So the first problem, whenever you would face with 40 guard servers, Number one, check if internet is there. Number two, check if DNS resolution is happening or not. Most of the problems get resolved there itself. Okay. Now these are uh, the other FQDNs which the 40 guard usually queries. Just one question. For this 40 guard, we need to buy separately with 40 how it is? So whenever you are having, a, let's say your company buys a 40, 40 gate device, right? You'll okay. be buying a license with that. There will be a support license where you'll be buying an IPS license, web filter and video filtering license, all those. Mm -hmm. things. Okay. Among okay. that, you will get these services. So that is probably the additional cost, the licensing cost. Okay. 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 So these are few other uh, URLs that are there that usually the FortiGate tries and connect to. You will not have to go through them. They will never come into picture. They will never come and haunt you. What you will be checking is 
Number one, like I said, internet. Number two is DNS. Number three, try changing the port, how you are accessing this. It's usually accessed on 443, port 53 or 8888. Sometimes your upstream ISP could be blocking a port and due to that, it could be blocking that traffic. What you can do is change the port number and see if that works. By the, usually by that only the issue gets resolved at least 90% of the times. So in 6.4 or later third party SSL certificate verification and OACP stapling has been implemented for all FortiGuard servers. By default, the FortiGuard access mode is anycast. So whenever how you are accessing the FortiGuard, it is anycast. So basically there are multiple FortiGuard servers available on internet. I will be my, I will be casting my request to any of them. That's why that any cast is there. Okay. Uh, other than that, if we talk about the basic uh, administration things, what could be there is, for example, uh, you first can have an administrator created. Okay. Here you are seeing uh, one REST API admin as well. What is this? This is if you are going to use any particular application through which you will be using uh, through, through which you will be uh, entering into FortiGate. So this API query that will come from that application to FortiGate, then you can configure this. I haven't seen anyone configuring it like that. It's pretty straightforward configuring it with administrator. Okay. And uh, post doing the administrator, you will have a local user. You will set a password for him. And then you have other options which you can enable to factor authentication you can enable. Uh, you can enable trusted host. Okay. What are these? I'll tell you. Before that, you'll understand what kind of admin profile you are creating for your user. And then you will be giving your user that administrative profile. Okay. So there are uh, around three type, type of users. Number one is super admin user, because like I said, this is a Linux uh, operating system. So that's basically that hierarchy will be followed. So what is that hierarchy? The super admin, which will have the full global access. Then there would be a custom profile. If you want, you can create this by default. It won't be there. Then usually it's the prof admin. Prof admin is someone who has the complete access of a one particular VDOM. So if you are wanting to make the changes and you are not having read and write, uh, you're not having right access you will not be able to configure anything on FortiGate. You will need to have a super admin credential in order to make the changes in the FortiGate. And these are the read and write uh, permissions. Okay. Now, uh, the trusted host. What is this trusted host? So, for example, this is an additional security feature in your firewall. Uh, like I know I'm sitting at home and I'm accessing my firewall on my public IP. The public IP of firewall is 1.1.1.1 and I'm sitting at home with a dedicated ISP line 2.2.2.2 and that IP never changes. What I can do is I can put uh, the trusted host there and then uh, anyone other than me will not be able to log in into this firewall. So if an attacker tomorrow comes to access my firewall, even if he knows my username and password, he will not be able to access my file because I have enabled trust login. But for that, I better know my IP, public IP, and that should not change. If that IP changes, gone, there will be a big problem. So be very particular while enabling such services. Now, a little about administrative access. What are the ports uh, which are there by default? So by default, HTTP 80 and HTTPS 443 is enabled on FortiGate. These are the by default telnet and SSH port that FortiGate is open on. Apart from that, you can have uh, the password uh, policy can also be there. That anyone who is having, uh, who wants to connect to the firewall, the password for that guy should be 8 character, 10 character, 1 big, 1 small, all those things you can do that. That comes in the password policy. Apart from that, basic things again, uh, in your network interface, you'll go to network tab, go to interface, and there you can give the IP addresses as well. Okay. Your IP addresses can be manual 
automatic dhcp pp hoy these are different uh, addressing schemes usually people do the manual or dhcp or ppp hoy and then you can define what are the rules of your network interface like i created port 3 i gave it an ip address but what is the role of that is it a lan is it a dmz what is it and then what should i be calling it i can call it wan here the role will be wan but i can name it internet so the name of the port 3 will be sounding like internet when wherever i put a capture or a sniffer or whatever those things it will come as internet okay now if i uh, change the role to lan okay and put the public ip as well on that lan what do you think will it work like a wan or will it work like a lan guys Uh, it should work like lan because the role is lan but the public ip right? <clears throat> it won't really make much of a difference we can test it out in the lab what exactly will happen because i haven't tested it out yet it's just okay. that while telling you guys i thought i mean i never tried that but usually nothing happens it, as long as i'm able to reach that ip i will be working without a problem okay so there is no no the thing like uh, inside outside lan wan so it's just like... basically for your ease okay it's just basically for your ease if i am creating port 3 and making it as lan and then i am having port 4 and putting it as dmz i'll have to create policy from port 3 to port 4 the traffic okay. won't be working else okay okay now a uh, static gateway Uh, must be at least one default route, right? Obviously, else how will I connect to the internet? So there will be one default route. The gateway address will not be zero 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 zero. Rather, you will have to put your proper gateway address. If the gateway address is zero, uh, if your how you are getting internet is like you don't know your next hop IP, then you can. Uh, but for that, it needs to be DHCP or PPPoE. then it will take that automatically else you will have to define your gateway address okay what is priority we'll talk about that also later so it depends on what we give the ip not depends on the alias or something sorry so if we select the different alias okay so if we give uh, like in static if we give the default gateway okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, no, dynamic IP. Okay, so it's working through the IP only, not to what we are selecting here. Correct. So, see, eventually you will have to define the interface also, but that interface is, uh, it will, it will not matter what is the role of the interface. What will matter is what is the name of it. You'll have to define some interface. so because when 0000 traffic i don't know where to send the traffic i will look that the gateway what is what should be the gateway address and then through which interface i should be reaching to that gateway address mm -hmm. first i will check this and then i will check this okay. where to go okay no where to i don't know we can use this what is the gateway address okay this is the gateway address how to reach it out okay via this then i'll send it through that and then obviously i will also check the ad value if there is something uh, configured with lower ad value obviously that will take care of this mm -hmm. right <clears throat> now again uh, basic fortigate is also having some built in servers fortigate can be used as the dhcp server as well and you can define the rules as well that um, you know i i want to block the mac address if it does not belong to me so that granular also you can do it on fortigate that is the best part about it okay and uh, this is something about uh, again uh, ip address uh, assignment rule assign block or reserve the ip addresses to the host we can do that based on mac type we can assign the ip or choose from the existing ones or probably 
reserve the IP for a particular MAC address if we want. We can do that through the FortiGate also. I'm not sure if uh, other firewalls can also do that. Uh, they can behave like a DHCP and DNS server, but do they give this granular control? I'm not sure. But at least we get that on FortiGate. Then FortiGate again can also work as the DNS server and uh, what the flow would be like if the FortiGate is able to, if we have set it to forward, non-recursive or recursive. So usually if you are querying something and FortiGate is your DNS server, uh, FortiGate interface IP is configured as DNS server, the, uh, the request will come to FortiGate. The, if FortiGate has already some answer for uh, kept in its cache for that particular URL, it will reply to you with that cache. If it does not have it, it will check with its own DNS settings, with its own DNS server. Okay. And then its own DNS server can be something like a dot a dot a dot it. It can be something like your ISP provided DNS server, or it can be something which could be 40 gate DNS uh, DDNS servers. We'll get to that part. We, we can see that as well. So like they said, you can configure it as local DNS servers. You can enable and configure DNS separately on each interface. Local DNS servers can improve performance in your 40 mail device. Why? Because you don't have to go out and get the DNS queries resolved. It can be done internally itself. So 40 gate can answer DNS queries in three ways. Uh, forward, which is a relies all query to separate DNS server. Uh, that is, it acts as a DNS relay instead of DNS server. Non-recursive replies to queries for items in the FortiGate DNS database and does not forward unresolvable queries or recursive where it will reply to the query for item in the FortiGate DNS database and forward all other queries to separate DNS server. So you can also create a DNS database inside the FortiGate. I will not recommend you to do that, but uh, I mean in your organization because it's hell lot of thing on a network administrator. It's pretty easily done on your ADs rather, but still, if you want, Fortigate has that as well. Now coming to the VDOMs. What are VDOMs? VDOMs are basically <clears throat> we split Fortigate into multiple virtual devices. They employ independent security policies, different routing tables, and so on. So we can have three different gateways on same Fortigate in three different VDOMs. There will be no problem. And even the interface can be divided based on the VDOMs. Like for example, first four interfaces should be in VDOM 1. Next four should be in VDOM 2. Another four should be in VDOM 3. Like that also we can do that. So by default, FortiGate supports up to 10 VDOMs. So high-end models, like I said, they will allow you to have... Uh, so uh, what is the second point? Packets or... So packets are confined to same VDOM. So for example... Uh, this four ports are in your <coughs> VDOM one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And customer okay. comes on uh, port two and it will leave the packet on port one. So that traffic coming from port two to leaving from port one, this VDOM two and VDOM three will never know that packet arrived at 40 gate and left the 40 gate. In their yeah. logging also, that packet will not come. It will be oh. confined to this VDOM only. Oh, okay. 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 Now again, we can have independent VDOMs. Multiple VDOMs are completely separated. There is no communication between VDOMs. Each VDOM has its own physical interface link to the internet. So I will connect one van here, one van for VDOM 2, one van for VDOM 3. It will have its own internet, different, making one forty gate into three. So or, in real time, they will give the three separate ISP or something if they have three VDOMs? Obviously. So if you want to give three internets, you'll have to give three ISPs. Uh -huh, okay. But again, you will not have to buy three firewalls. One of them is enough. That's, uh -huh. that's the part. Uh -huh, now, okay. uh, comes to the mesh VDOM. So what is mesh VDOM? VDOMs connect to other VDOMs through inter VDOM links. Only internet traffic needs to go through the, uh, through to the internet VDOM. Only to the two internet VDOM is physically connected to the internet. So what is happening here? There are two VDOMs, VDOM 1 and VDOM 2. Mm -hmm. Only one VDOM is having the internet access. The other VDOM is just having the access for the 
internal users. So for example, let's say uh, your company is there and uh, you have two types of people in your company. Number one is your HR people, which do not need internet because they just want to talk internally anyway. And then there is uh, sales people who need to go out to internet in order to reach out to their public meetings. So you can have two different VDOMs and the traffic for HR people, if it is not defined to go out, that traffic will not go on VDOM. VDOM 1, the internet VDOM. But the sales guys traffic will go on VDOM 1. So for example, let's say if sales guy says that, okay, uh, you know, Pranav, I'm not getting internet. What should I do? What I need to do is, number one, first capture I will take on VDOM 2. Why? Because the initial traffic initiated in VDOM 2 only. Then next capture I will take at VDOM 1 to see when VDOM 2 sent the traffic to VDOM 1, did the VDOM 1 forward the traffic to internet or not. For example, if I don't see that in the sniffer, for some reason I don't see VDOM 1 sending the traffic out in the sniffer, I will take flow debugs to understand what is the problem? Is it a problem with route that VDOM 2 only is not able to send the traffic to VDOM 1? And if anyway, I don't see any traffic for VDOM, I don't see any packet in uh, sniffer taken on VDOM 1, certainly the traffic from VDOM 2 only is not coming to VDOM 1. So what is the problem? Then we can check that. So we have to configure that particular port which is communicating from one VDOM to another. The inter VDOM link you'll have to configure. Oh, okay. So in this type of things, we can uh, transfer, we, we, we can handle only one internet to pass through the other VDOMs, right? Correct. Because in this scenario, it will just have one internet VDOM. Rest are anyway defined to work oh, internally. Okay. okay. Do we have lab on this VDOM? Sorry? Do we have la lab? We are going to do lab on VDOMs? Yeah, you can create labs on VDOM, no problem. Okay. It's not... Uh, hefty configuration it's pretty straightforward uh, now the management vdom so usually usually your management vdom so whenever i create a vdom let's say i created uh, i wanted two vdoms in that scenario if i create two separate vdoms there will be one main vdom that will be root vdom no that's not the main but i mean main in the sense the internet handling usually the internet handling VDOM. So one is your global VDOM. Then uh, one is your global config. Then it comes the root VDOM. Then if there are two further VDOMs that you created one and two, those will be the VDOMs. Your management VDOM usually is your root VDOM. And this is something that should have access <laughs> all the time to internet. Because if your FortiGate is not going to have access to the internet, your FortiGate will not have uh, uh, communication with FortiGuard and that will be a big problem for you. I have seen issues when uh, what people used to do, they used to create VDOM and do not give the internet to the management VDOM. They created VDOM 1 as the management VDOM, but the internet is present on VDOM 2. So VDOM 2 cannot reach out to the 40 gate, 40 guard and get the updates and upgrades. That is the job of a management VDOM. Management VDOM is something that should have the internet to reach out to the 40 guard, get the ratings and then share it among other VDOMs. So they are all the management traffic for FortiGate originates. FortiGate so originated. This all comes under inter uh, inter with interlink VDOM or something, or separate separately. Also, it will be default like this. I didn't get your question. Uh, it like so you let's you say the whatever the updates come from first it comes to the uh, root VDOM, right? Then only it pass through the other VDOMs. No, no, no. Uh, the updates you're talking about, right? Yes, yes, update. Yeah, the update will come to root VDOM. And then it will provide it to the other ones. So, for example, your web filter is being used in VDOM 1. If Either it is configured inter-VDOMs or uh, separate also, it will be same or? 
no there has to be interweave down traffic right eventually uh-huh. if you are sending the traffic out to internet you will have to have interweave down link so that traffic from within the vdom uh-huh. go to the internet okay. okay 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 now one very basic thing uh, people who are using uh, fortigate and they, if they frequently reach out to tac tac usually tells you to provide you uh, provide them with the configuration backup so this is how you would take the configuration backup you will there is an option at the top right you click on that configuration backup and then you will click okay here no need to put any password and click okay here a configuration file will get downloaded to your device and if you want to uh, put uh, the configuration on fortigate you'll use the restore option and similar way choose the file which you want to upload on fortigate choose the config file and click okay that's how you can backup and restore the configuration so in migration scenario like in the gui part you can take the backup right no need to go the cli to take another like that so gui backup is enough right for migration. how do you take the cli backup like we are for manual you are copying and pasting note for or something like that so in that scenario do you not have a gui access already or you have a gui access till you do the cli thing mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right so usually obviously why you are doing the note pattern yeah, no, you don't have gui access no need to go for it so okay okay yeah now uh how do you upgrade again you go to the system in system you will find an option firmware in that firmware see how it is showing the current version is this 645 is available now this information is only present when the connectivity with fortigard is there if i close the connectivity with fortigard you will not see these things not that it will disperse like automatically you would be able to see them but you will not get at least the updated data recently i did an upgrade and uh, i take away the internet this will say that i don't know if there is any other update available for you or not see it is showing the patches and firmware it will stop showing that so that is why uh, that connectivity with fortigard is important and but this is how you can get the uh, firmware upgrade options now how do you upgrade the firmware first thing is these are very basic things uh, you need not get into this while just for the sake of learning fortigate but in your day to day activity if you are using fortigate these tips and tricks that i am telling you these will be very helpful for you so how do you upgrade the firmware first thing is take the backup configuration every time whenever you are doing firmware upgrade ensure whichever version you jump on so for example if for uh, this is the upgrade path for example i followed 643 642 3 4 5 and then 700 i better have the uh, backup image for 642 643 644 645 645 every time i get upgraded to a certain version which is in the path take the backup configuration because just in case i started upgrading from 642 okay and then i stopped at 700 while following a path and i never took a backup of that and by this time something got screwed in my configuration something bad happened it things are not working how will i roll back i don't have configuration or maybe something got spoiled after 645 i may have to format the device and then put again and 642 and then start again so what i can do rather just go back to 644 Put the six four four configuration because I took a backup of that. So that is why I always ensure before making any changes in your day to day activity, you take a backup config just in case things don't go right, uh, don't go go wrong. You can put the config back. Okay, now download a copy of the current firmware. Yes, have physical access. Again, when you are making upgrade process, preferably don't do it remotely. Be in there just in case if. device don't work as per the expectation you can at least have the console access and do things okay and this is one thing that 40 gate tag will always tell you read the release notes because 
you know your environment better because for example like if i give you an example uh, it was probably 7 to 1 code where uh, the explicit proxy was not working so we upgraded to that and uh, our explicit proxy broke and it was a major escalation for us we should have read the form, uh, the release notes properly before upgrading because it says that explicit proxy will not work in that so we better not go on that just by attack engineer telling us that you can go to 7 to 1 it's a good code it's not his fault he does not know that uh, we don't have what we have in our environment so being your administrators you need to know your device well and you need to know what all things you are using so this is few tricks that you need to ensure in order to bring in that problematic things for you in 48 this was some basic introduction to the firewall mm -hmm. okay so we'll take a small 2 minute break i'll grab a glass of water and uh, i'll probably show you uh, one of my device uh, show you a few things that we saw in the slide okay okay Hello. Huh? 